That's right. I just learned about uh, the person who invented the saxophone, Jeff. Is that right? Yeah. You know his name? No. His last name was Sax. <laughs> really? Yeah, literally. Oh, well, that makes sense then. Yeah. The saxophone. His name was Al Toe Sax. <laughs> <laughs> get this started <laughs> we'll get this started we're at episode uh number four season three 6 a.m right. podcast that's absolutely right jeff and we're here and jeff i need to ask uh, a very burning question at the beginning of this show you may go ahead tell me about the tesla guy oh you so tesla guy and this isn't a reflection of all tesla drivers no in fact, I am. I know I'm some fr- good ones. I know some good ones. Yeah. It just happened to be that this individual was driving a Tesla. That's right. the only part of that story that's going to matter. And and I was on what is known as the Carlisle Pike, which is directly, um, you know, outside of my neighborhood. There, it's it's a main artery in Pennsylvania. At any rate, it's usually congested. It's a you know, yeah. it's a bit of a clusterfuck. But but n- nonetheless. I don't know, like, if, you know, most of our listeners are from Pennsylvania, so they know that Pennsylvania drivers are, you know, it, it ebbs and flows, but most of the time they're a bunch of dickheads. Yeah, absolutely. And people drive like dickheads in yes. Pennsylvania. And, uh, and I, so, like, I'm used to it, and I, and I generally try and keep, like, a, at least a car length away from people when we're traveling, just Smart. because most people are on their phones and not paying attention to traffic and you know this is yeah. how accidents happen yes we are so somebody somebody driving a tesla in the left lane and i'm driving i'm we're rolling slow i mean like 25 miles an hour it's traffic and he just like he just winds over to my lane no signal just winds over to it i don't like that yeah it happens right not okay. a big deal i see him coming so i slow down so he can because t- i'm not going to get into the whole like i'm going to speed up and then hopefully get hit by this motherfucker right so so I let him in there, and I don't know what was going on with this guy, but he turned his turn signal on after he got in the lane. And then I see him, and his head is like, he's got something in his hand, which I assume is a brush. And he's like, brushing his hair like this. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit, like this guy's going ham on his head. Whoa. And I'm watching this thing. I have to stop. I'm listening to a podcast. I have to stop the podcast. And I'm watching this guy because I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I mean, he's really like hammering his head yeah, yeah, yeah. with this brush and getting his side. And I'm like, like, he's got to be getting sweaty, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he puts the brush down and his head just keeps going. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, like. But I, I mean, I wish I had like a, yeah, I yeah. wish I had a dash cam for this one because it would have definitely made the podcast. And yeah, we would yeah, have put yeah. up there. So from now on, I'll I be love da- your recreation. Though. I'll be dash camming it, and 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 then like and then he continues to drive like like as though there's nobody else on the road, and he's like in the middle of an Arizona desert, just, just wandering cruising. around. He left his turn signal on, just kept like weaving in and out of traffic, and <laughs> and and eventually made his way onto the onto two eighty three and and took off, but. That's crazy. But yeah, I it was. Just, I thought about it. I experienced a lot of crazy drivers in Pennsylvania since I've driven or I've been here. I, I've realized that the worst <laughs> habits seem to be Pennsylvania drivers. So like, I I realize every Pennsylvania driver slow down at green lights. When they're approaching green lights, yeah, they start to like they either tap the brakes once or twice or something like. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And and. Everyone here has an aversion to yielding and roundabouts. That the, both all of, all three of these statements are a hundred percent true. I, I I and like so that's how I know I'm, I'm they're accurate because you were you were born and bred. I born and bred in Pennsylvania, right? Yeah, you've been driving here your whole life, and yeah. I I've driven with you. I yeah. don't think you're a shitty driver. But, well, thank you. I actually take a, a little bit of pride in my driving. You should honest. right out here in this uh, <laughs> intersection, right across from a cop station, right across from the cop station, right. And get this is the this this is the kicker. I got pulled over in the scenario. <laughs> so I have my left turn signal on. I want to go that way. Yeah, left. The person on the, the, the other side, the coming this way, on the other side of the intersection, had their left turn signal on. Right. Right? Okay. So the person in front of me at the light also has their turn signal on. So when the light turns green, that means 
both of these jabronis should be kind of just you can coexist go ahead right what well, i'm going left you're going left let's we go. can do this together let's do this together it's a tight thing let's all work together right but the person in front of me just goes left and the person at the light just stays stopped I'm right like okay what an idiot so i start to go and they start to go straight with their left turn signal on <laughs> and they honk at me <laughs> So I go, I said, oh, you motherfucker. I flicked them off and yeah. I said, you are a stupid piece of shit. Right. Something along those lines. Right. I'm driving down the road and the cop, whoop, hits the, their lights. They were must have been in their car already and just and in the parking lot and said, what, what happened back there? And I was like, this ticket. And I got a warning. Why did I get a warning, Jeff? Well, I mean, it beats I, a ticket. I, well, I, but dude, if he gave me a ticket, I would have been on the news. <laughs> I would have been like, are you serious? <laughs> Because he said, if that was if there was an accident, you guys both would have been at fault. And I said, how? They were signaling that they were going. I didn't obviously. I didn't. Argue. I didn't say how. I said, okay, officer, thanks. And yeah. I was like, but yeah. it was like, what the fuck are you talking about? If they had their let. So like I said, in roundabouts, just Google Pennsylvania roundabouts, and you will see a bunch of people going off on them online, saying like, what? What? What am I supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. Yield. To the left. End of story, dude. Yeah, that's it. It's not European uh, infiltrators trying to colonize. It's not communism. Yeah, yeah, no, it's just a circle. Yeah, it's not Calm China. Down. China's not <laughs> China. China's not trying to take over. I'm sorry, you you triggered me when you said <laughs> yeah, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania drivers. drivers. Oh. Yeah, and but this had really nothing to do with today's episode. I was ready to blame it on the Tesla too. Yeah, it wasn't the Tesla's fault. Right. I think like maybe if that would have been a self-driving car, this could have been avoided. I th- I, I thought yeah, I thought honestly because I drove with uh, uh, another six amer David. Yeah. Who has a Tesla? He's one of our the te- the good ones. One of the good <laughs> Tesla drivers. Uh, and he sh- was showing. Me all the features and stuff like that and there is a self-driving feature and it is relatively as long as there's lines on the road and sure all this other shit it it's pretty you can comb your fucking hair however you (laughs) want he didn't do that but like (laughs) like you can do whatever you want yeah but you kind of have to like you have to show it your face which is weird okay gotcha so this guy maybe didn't want to like so he's just like i'm gonna leave it on manual fucking comb my hair i'm in control (laughs) did you hear any music I, I did so I, I but I couldn't make out like what he was listening to. How did it he was, do that for that long? I don't know, but he was like really hurt. I don't know, man. He was <sighs> he's letting it rip. So yeah, I, I appreciate you sharing that and, yeah, and you're triggering welcome. me to get me all fired up. Yeah, are you still zooted on caffeine? By the way, are you like a no? I, I'm pretty still like I'm pretty still like I'm like I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so this morning, yeah. this morning, and like we'll get into the get our own main topic as long as I don't start tweaking out and yeah, like yeah. chewing on my own tongue or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but this okay, so so and this is after we just had like a big conversation about wanting to stop or cut back on caffeine. That's or whatever. my favorite part of the story, by the way, is the fact that you were like, oh yeah. I was just talking about quitting caffeine. I'm realizing that I'm such a disappointment to myself <laughs> and to everybody else. But what happened this morning is that I, of course, last night recognizing that I was out of coffee, so I wasn't going to be able to make coffee this morning, and I could have gone to the store and bought coffee, but I was like, that's nah, all right. So, yeah. so, and maybe in some like weird way, I was like, maybe that's a good morning to not drink coffee. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. which I just chose not to follow by going to the <laughs> sheet station <laughs> And because and you woke up without coffee, because like, I woke up, fuck, fuck right. is, I'm going to go stop oh. it. So I uh, I got up and I went to the sheet station yeah. and which is on the Carlisle Pike. Shout out Carlisle Pike. Shout out, <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> I know you watching. You girl. know who you are, Carlisle Pike. <laughs> of course, I buy an extra large coffee. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, not a medium, not a small, not a large, an extra large coffee. And when I get to the gym, I set it down on the floor, which I always do next to the chair that I put my stuff on. Yeah. And I recognize that the that the coffee mug is leaking. Oh. And it's and I'm like <sighs> Okay, so I just spent two dollars and ninety nine cents on a coffee. I'm not gonna waste it. Right. Which would have been the logical thing to do is just throw it out. Yeah. I can <clears throat> see that. Because why like, you know, Instead, I decided to drink the entire thing <laughs> <laughs> before class, and I and I'm looking, and it's like I've got like seven minutes before class, and I'm like I'm I'm housing this thing. I'm like look look look, and yeah, look, yeah. look 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 look, and so by the time class kicks off, like 
I'm rearing to go. What I recognize is I did drink it before class started, and I was sitting on the mat, and you guys were all conversating. We had a big class. What an excellent class this yeah, morning. Yeah, it was awesome. Way. It was a great class. Good energy. Good lots energy. Of people. Everybody rolled really well. It was yeah. just, it did really well on the techniques, which was great. But at any rate, I'm sitting, I notice I'm sitting on the mat, like staring, and I'm sweating. I'm just sweating. <laughs> and, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Well, let me tell you, I'm still like, I'm still pretty amped up. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I feel like that I've had that same feeling before. If I drink too much coffee on an empty stomach, which I know you, I was on, I was on an empty stomach. Yes, you're, you're, you drank an extra large coffee on an empty stomach. I'm, I did. I'm. It's it's a good thing you didn't throw up. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good thing I didn't throw up. I did say. I'm glad you. I didn't roll with you too. I did say that like. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I did say that like at uh, the beginning of class that I was going to keep the bar low today and try n- <laughs> try not to shit my pants. <laughs> yeah, I, re- I do remember that. But uh, everything went fine by the way. It was right. it was a non-issue. But yeah, man, I, uh, I I really got jacked up because here's the other thing too is that I don't typically drink coffee. I'll have a couple of sips before class, but I usually don't drink the coffee until after class. Oh wow. Yeah. So, so like so it's it, so even still you don't really drink an extra large co- you no, drink no, coffee. No, no, no. I don't drink any coffee. Like I'll like I said I'll have a sip or two and really that's it. Like it is I usually carry it in a thermos so like I, I make coffee in the morning and I and I wait till after class and then I'll have coffee and water and you know and it and I it, and I drink it on the way home and then I'll still have some left over at home and I'll finish it. That's it. That's all the coffee I have for the day. No, dude. I've hooked drank that thing. Yeah, I mean, I really drank that thing. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad that it, at least it didn't have uh, a, a, the adverse ex- effect of killing you. That's good. Number one, it didn't explode your heart. Win. Uh, and also, you didn't throw up or shit yourself. Win, and win. We all learned jujitsu and win again. That's but four wins. We did it. We did it. Uh, uh, Jeff, what uh, in your caffeine-addled brain? Yeah. Did you think of that you'd like to talk about today? Oh, you know what's you know what's funny that you asked that is because as we as we're progressing, you guys might have noticed that we're changing like setups and, yeah. and so forth. We're just kind of getting back into we've got new some new technology that we're putting together. And shout out to Pat who's sitting across from me right now, who's your who's your co host here for this six AM podcast. Fucking <laughs> fuck guys. Enough. This is this is getting out of hand, man. This isn't your show. Yeah. What's okay. going on? It's it's my show. Go go do something. <laughs> Psychos. God damn it! All so right. anyway, <laughs> I'm like, I'll be like, I'm gonna tie them together by the tails and like yeah, use them like nunchucks. This is nunchucks. not a test you want to get fucking <laughs> no, I'm fired sorry, up right get now, guys. <laughs> So, uh, oh, the shout out to you was like, oh, yeah. you guys have noticed that like the intros and, and uh, all the editing and stuff, all that stuff's done by Pat and he's doing an, an amazing job. Thank I'm really, you. really pleased. Um, in that process, we are like figuring out like what what do we want from a lighting perspective? This is pretty much, it, 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 although it like looks like we're like the Wayne's world of podcasting, yeah. it's intentional. Guys. Yeah. We do this like on purpose. Yeah. This is and, a, this is a catech. It it's is a, the cat. It's a nice, right. it's a nice, cozy, homey feel. We try to not make it anything other than what it is. One of the other things that we're doing is that we've actually taken the time to like sort of plan out our our episodes yes. and how they're going to work. So today's topic, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the the uh, intentional and important nature of position in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Ah. What's the, what's the thing that we say all the time? Position before submission. That's right. A new one. I got That's one. That's right. Yes. Position before submission. So we're going to talk about position today and what why it's so important that we focus on the 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 principles of position and what that means in jujitsu and also how it relates to like advancing not only your uh, ability to score points in a competition sense but from a self defense perspective. Why why do we do this? Like why is this a thing when we could just go after the submission? Right. You know why? Why position? My favorite example of this is when you talk about arm bars, and you talk about if you don't get into the right position, if you don't have a, a grasp of the the right. limb, or if you don't have yourself in the correct position to block them, right. it's going to look a lot like. And usually, it's something along the lines of you holding their wrist near your crotch and you flopping around like a fish. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like it's one of those things where like. And because that's what it, you end up looking like. You yeah. end up looking like a dickhead yeah. because you you didn't just make sure you had balance. Yeah. You have control. Yeah. Control is a really good way right. to put it. And when we talk about position in jujitsu, what we're talking about, and, those, and this is particularly important for those that don't that are new to jujitsu or don't practice jujitsu, is the understanding of like what's happening. Because I think for a lot of folks, even people that are that practice jujitsu, like watching it, for instance, can be a, a drag. Yeah. 
especially in like gi competition because we know that like no gi is exciting because it's slippery and it's it's yeah, faster yeah. and so forth but but even in those scenarios like position is maybe i mean it's not more important but it is just as important as it is in gi competition but when we're talking about position what we're what we're trying to do is from the outset from the very beginning when you start on your feet you have this important um, space between you two and that's and it's about distance management it's yeah. about yeah, yeah. it's about being able to take up that space so that your opponent can't do those things in jiu jitsu from a self defense perspective mm-hmm. our objective is to get you on the ground so that you are limited in your tool sets but just getting you to the ground isn't enough what we want to make sure that we're doing is that we're putting you in a position that you can't fight back yeah the submission is the icing on the cake. Yeah, yeah. We reserve that submission, and, and we legitimately call Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it is known as the gentle art. And the reason it's known like that is not because it's gentle in the sense that, you you know, breaking your arm is not gentle. <laughs> Choking you unconscious is not gentle. Not always, no. Not always. Sometimes. It's, <laughs> right. It's, it's comfortable. It's nice being held sometimes. I think so. Yeah. But the reason it's called the gentle art is because is because we don't have to do those things unless it's absolutely necessary. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's it's the cho- it's the we have the option to we be have, gentle. Right. We have the control over yeah. that position. And if you've ever seen, if you've ever, if you guys have ever had an opportunity to see Matt Sarah, who, yeah, is a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt and a and a former UFC fighter and, and champion, um, if and he runs a runs a great uh, curriculum now. Um, if you've ever had the chance to see him out in public, I think he's gotten into like 50 fights out in the public sphere. Ooh, Matt, Matt Sarah, really? No, I don't oh, know. It, it just seems to me maybe. that like he's I don't know a, if they're all videotaped. There, there's a, yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. couple. There's a couple of them. Like I don't, I don't know what it is. Like, that was more excitement on my face of like really. Oh, there's oh, so okay. many. I got some googling. There's to do. some like some street beefs. Yeah. No, there's like no he and and legitimately is like not doing anything. Got got himself like. Got himself. If you ever see Matt Sarah, uh, there's one in particular here that's not that's not too old where he's and I can't remember now if it's a it's, I think a it's restaurant or a casino. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And he pins a guy to the ground and and like he's and, and holding his, his hands and like and his expl- explanation is exactly what you're talking about. Him yeah. explaining that scenario, he says. Uh, he's like my daughters are there i don't want to traumatize them yeah his family's there i don't want to i don't you know what i mean like yeah I, he's like i i'm past that i'm not i'm not in the mood like so all he does is just grabs his wrist yeah gets mount and he just holds him there and and right and it's matt sarah which is the entertaining part because right then he's talking you know he's like talking to the cops like hey you gonna do something here yeah like hey you're gonna arrest like what? <laughs> like, yeah, what do you want me to do? I'm this doing guy? your job. Right. Like, I what think do you at one point he says, "I'm doing your job here," or something like that. Like, <laughs> uh, it, but it, he, it's exactly what you were just talking about. He yeah. made the the conscious choice to say this guy's being a dickhead. He's being a obli- uh, uh, what is it? Belligerent. <laughs> I was gonna say he's obliterated, but same thing. <laughs> obliterate. He, he was obliterated, right? And and he was making a scene in some Vegas uh, place, and he took him out yeah essentially so he would not do that and neutralize the situation in a non-violent right in a pretty gentle way he, he did, did it in flip-flops too. and he did and he did it and that's and this is a perfect example of this because at that point you know and i think it's i think it's fair to say that like when things become heated or it turns into a fight like you've got you have options and yes. your options are to walk away which is generally speaking the, the better option yeah if you can get away um and just ignore it and move on with your life that's really important um, and you should follow those protocols. If you can not get engaged, yeah. terrific. Even if they said something to your lady or your boy, right, or your right, or right, like, right, right. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, fuck them. You so. spell your thirteen dollar drink. I, I do. That's the one where I'd be like, well, hey, man, I mean, like, come I on. fucking spent eighteen dollars on that fucking IPA, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna buy me another one? <laughs> I think that it's. I but, think though, when it comes though to like the point of no return, where you're going to get into a fight, then you have choices. You can right. kick them. You can punch them. You can, and all of these things have potentially very severe consequences like punching somebody in the face especially somebody that's a non-fighter and you are a fighter you're matt sarah like yeah. you know how to throw punches yeah, yeah um and you know how to take punches this guy probably doesn't right and, and he's and he's also drunk yeah and he's, he's obliterated. also obliterated right. he's <laughs> obliterated so so you punch him and he hits his head and he's yeah. and he dies yeah, or yeah. something terrible happens to him and now you're responsible for that thing so so, but jujitsu gives us this opportunity where we can be gentle. We can, we can, we, we can, we can empathize with our with our uh, our opponent in this case, okay. and and put him on the ground and, and secure him safely. But all that is done because there was no submission. All that was done through position, right? 
It was all about position. And so in jujitsu, the way that, that it operates is it starts with levels of levels of position and progression through those positions where we start with a with what's known as like we, the takedown, of course, and then there's passing a guard. So that's and for us in jujitsu, that's any time like the legs are involved with stopping us from moving forward. So as a top person, we are trying to get past the legs, secure the hips secure the head and shoulder yeah you talk, you talk about that a lot yeah you talk about that in pin. class all the time and that's ingrained in my memory. that's good it should be that. it should legs, be legs hips shoulders head. head right we're trying to pin our opponent right right and each step in that process with starting with what's known as side control when we're perpendicular to our opponent to the mount which is when we're on top of them or we're on their back these are all uh examples of dominant position right where we're putting you in places that you are unable to defend yourself uh, successfully. But more importantly than that is that you're unable to strike and hit me. Right. You're yeah, unable yeah. You're to hurt neutralizing me. neutralizing them. Right. Yeah. Right. You're unable to hurt me from those it's not about your. It's not about your dominance. About, it's about controlling them. Correct. So that's something that you can have control over somebody, but what if they have knowledge of that as well? Well, right. Well, this is, of course, where... What like, if you're dealing with a trained uh, A trained fighter. A trained obliterator. <laughs> Right. So what do you do when you have somebody that that knows what they're doing, too? And that is why this is why I say like it like positional dominance is so important because and and I often encourage you guys as students of jujitsu is that when you when you transition from one space to a next, whether it's from your feet to the ground or from like the passing position, is that you take your time in those in each of those transitions. I like to hold my opponent for a good like. 30 to 40 seconds in those positions because you're going to you're going to get all of their a-game escapes at that time oh. they're going to deploy like how yeah. they know how to get out instinctually it's not they're they're not actually thinking to themselves i'm gonna do all my a-game escapes it's just that like you know that that's they're not gonna go like i'm gonna try my worst escape right <laughs> they're not they're gonna instinctually go to like their best escape yeah. right and and if you can shut that down then that's when they start getting exhausted and they get exhausted mentally first, which leads to physical exhaustion almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And so you can recognize that if you're, if you're somebody that's focused on positional dominance, that you, you know, you have control because when they're trying to escape, they can't get out. Yeah. And so this makes it that much more important that when you guys are, when you guys are practicing this stuff and you're thinking about it in terms of like how does this work in real world applications but also how does it work because real world applications are still the mat yeah you're fighting other fighters yeah yeah for real and even if you're going into competitions it's that's the same idea super you're important right against other people that's right, right that's right and and so like it's important for you guys to to think about those and again the more that you the more that you focus on positional dominance the more that you recognize that you've actually mastering the skill sets necessary for for growth in jujitsu, right? Because that's what it is. Yeah. So if we go the whole way back and we look at Brazilian jujitsu and we say it's the gentle art, and we all agree with that it's the gentle art. Not, ever, but I'm saying we should all agree it's the gentle art. This right. is the this is our method of self defense. This is our method for combat sport fighting, and also keeping in mind that Brazilian jujitsu wasn't designed so that you wouldn't strike people. It was designed so that you could be in a position where I can hit you and you can't hit me. Right. So if you watch any of those like early like Gracie challenges and fights, they slap the shit out of. I guys. love. <laughs> oh man, I love. They still do it. You and why I mean? does like, it? And why do? But why are they slapping them versus punching them? Because it's it's more it's it's to just show exactly the dominance that I I have over you. That's right. I could yeah. be dropping like huge bombs on you right now, whether it's elbows or or punches, right. or I could have a brick in my hand. I could you be feel how strong I am. Yeah, I could be you caving. Yes, yeah, right. I could be caving your head in right now, but I'm not i'm slapping you it's embarrassing but what they hope to do in those scenarios is demonstrate the not only the uh, efficiency of their skill and their art yeah but also to to turn people like that into students yeah who are like i Usually. need to know i Usually. need to know how to do it right right yeah. I'm, I'm sure i'm sure there are plenty of like yeah instances where they're like no get the fuck out of here i always think about like with as popular as jujitsu or martial arts in general are sure. getting, sure. you know, and enough, you know, wrestling, you know, there's enough just ne athletes. I didn't realize how many, how many people wrestled, sure, and how strong and like, uh, kind of and dangerous wrestlers are. In well, general. you just said it. You just said it. These are dangerous people, right? And so you're going to find that you're if you if that happens and you do you can because because you are people that fight a lot that you train to fight. I mean this is what you do for fun, which right. makes you a little fucked up. But 
but also okay with me. <laughs> Dude, Dom wanted to use me last week. There was a fuck. Oh, I didn't. Oh even, wait, I'm sorry. Is, I'll, I'll bring it up. Isn't that later. for your OnlyFans page? So, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> hey, subscribe. <laughs> there is a situation in her at, at her pottery class where a car out of nowhere when she was getting ready to leave and okay. she had driven herself this time. Was it a Tesla? It was <laughs> I, might, I never asked, but I'm going to <laughs> let's just assume it's a Tesla. But uh this but this was crazy. This lady jumped out of the Tesla and started running <laughs> towards the studio and this guy was chasing her. No shit. And her teacher, Dom's teacher at the studio, the, yeah. uh, was like, get in get in the thing. You because we, we can lock the you door, in there right. and we can call the cops. Right. And the guy's like, Shut up, bitch, or something like that. Like said whatever. And like got caught up to the lady and started hitting her. And the lady and so the they tried to break it up and I guess he like threw uh, one of the other people off and threw another yeah. person off and like Dom came out and, and said, Like, what's going on? Like because because Dom's a fucking white person, and that's what we do when it's a situation. We go, huh? huh? What is this, a fire? <laughs> What's going on out here? What is that? Is that gasoline over there? <laughs> Those tank gasoline tanks on fire? You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. what it's just what we do. But he said something like, mind your own fucking business, bitch, or something like yeah. that, and started dragging this lady back to the car. Oh, and she man. said, none of us knew what to do. Yeah. And I said, and, and, and obviously I was like, call the police right of course get a description of yeah. the car like you obviously if you can't defend yourself like you said yeah get the fuck out of there and that's sure, what this lady was trying to do yeah and that's why when that's not met and there's nobody but she was like i wish you were here you could have used your juju yeah and i was like I, obviously i think that would have been my natural reaction because i would have been just sitting there waiting to pick yeah. up Dom. Yeah. yeah and 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 obviously i would have I would have felt compelled to not just sit there because I know how to handle that situation. So here's an interesting that like you bring this you bring this point up and this is a fascinating Sorry, story. I, I, no, it's I a great off the, no, it's a great segue because yeah. I think it's predicated upon an understanding. And this is what I was getting at when I was saying you guys train all the time. You understand who's dangerous and who's not. Right. You you can just feel it. You know, like. I've got to put this guy away. It's or, in your gut. Yeah, right. I wouldn't have. I, it wouldn't have been a question of like, go get that guy. I would have right. been, already been on him. You like, would have you know, been. Yeah. And this is and this is the thing. Like, and I and I feel very confident for our for our listeners who are, by the way, you know, students of of you know our academy and who train there. And we have a mentality. And it's one of the things that I that I take a lot of pride in is being friends with you people mm-hmm. because because you you guys are people that would that are. You're the ones that if you saw something happen to somebody, you would step in and, and help them, right? right. I, I and, and I liken it to this. I'm sure you've seen these videos before where like an old guy's, there's a, a street level camera and an old guy gets hit by a car and everybody just walks right by him. Yeah. He's laying on the ground. He just got hit by a it's car crazy. and somebody drove off and everyone just leaves him I there. Don't, I can't even fathom them. But not you fucking guys. Right. I know I know you guys will be the ones to go and help out. And so like, and sometimes because of your training doesn't necessarily mean that you would be able to j- annihilate this guy or whatever but no. you would at least be the meat shield I, yeah. between that between that woman I would have given dude, him some right? I would have given him a problem yeah. like I would have given him a thing of like hey pick on somebody your own and fucking side you, but, exactly and I would have and I probably would have hurt him really bad and yeah. I would have <laughs> and that, I have confidence in that when you brought when you brought, <laughs> when you brought up you brought up that this is what made me I gotta show you I gotta take you on a little trip here okay we're gonna go on a this trip this is how we got there is you said something about it, you're a little crazy because you fight every day. Yeah. That's a little something wrong with you because yeah. you enjoy getting into fights every day. And I was like, when Dom told me that, the um, the rest of that day, Jeff, was just me fantasizing about being there. Yeah, and being and able to stop that because, guy. Because, right. like, I know I said this earlier about, like, you don't have to get into a fight because somebody calls your lady a bitch or, yeah. or does something like that. But, right, right. dude, you were... You... you you offended three people. Well, you assaulted. You, attacked, them. you assaulted at least one. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like right. you verbally assaulted multiple, but you definitely sure. physically assaulted another one. You're also double parked <laughs> on the road <laughs> in your hey, Tesla. Bud, your stupid. Te- yeah, exactly. You're fucking self drive. You you get in your self driving Tesla and you fucking drive it up your own ass. That's right. How about that. Right. I would love to have helped that person because not only did. W- they all say i don't know what to do in this scenario but after the fact yeah. i don't know if any of them called the authorities or reported that but like that is something like like you gotta do something you, you have, have to. to do something you have to do something and right. there, there's just situations like that and 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 they all were trying 
but they didn't know what to do, and they sure. didn't know how. And, and you I become paralyzed. knew how to do that. And you I, did. I knew how that, to right? help. You and it, it was a thing I like. It's it's like one of those scenarios where you're like everybody hates the cops until that dude that's driving right. in front of you is a dickhead and a cop pulls out and pulls him over and you're like <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then you love the cops right but um it, because it only becomes th- those those things are only people only want those things when they become necessary because it's necessary right. you would be right. and you are somebody that is necessary you understand that if that happened it wouldn't be there wouldn't be talking you wouldn't be like yeah. i'm gonna try and calm him down no you're on that guy I'm like Right, I'm on him. Like no yeah. conversation, and he's like, "What the fuck?" And and then it's yeah, too he's late. Like, Whoa! Yeah. Like instead is. of him, and, and that's and my 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 thing. The the thing about it is, I hate people feeling empowered when they are wrong. Right. And that's that's the situation of like it's that's like that bugs the fuck out of me. Right. When somebody feels justified in their actions, and sure. That guy felt. Power and that guy felt and that guy yeah. and when is you going just to do to that it, again. Yeah, oh, of course. And of I course. could have taken that power from him, right? And I could have made him if a not, fool in front of these women. Yeah, if only just for that moment and made right. him go. <laughs> and right. I'm like, what? Like, right. In the back of a car. Right. Oh, that would have been so good to have him but what taken if, out. Yeah, but what if you didn't? Like, what right. if you didn't take him out? And only thing that happened though is that you gave her an opportunity to get in that studio exactly. and lock the door. Yeah. Yeah. Even if I ended up in a fucking hospital, I don't give a shit. She got away from him. Yeah. If he beat the shit out of me and left and they called the cops on him, at least it that, it ends there. At I'll least with you, these people. One thing that uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighters are good at is taking a beating. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I was going to say beat the shit out of me. I almost scoffed at that, but I was like, I'm saying it. I, it's one of those, like, I can't even, yeah, maybe he gets one in. Maybe so, he gets one in. So I would say that like those those scenarios where you find yourself in that position are very rare. And so like, so... But again, all that stems from a, a, a very sincere understanding of positional dominance. Right. Because because if you don't have that, the first thing you're going to resort to is throwing a punch, right? You're yeah. going to try and punch him. And, and you don't know what's going to happen after that. So, I mean, now you're overextended. Now you broke your hand. Yeah. Now you missed. And now he's on top of you, you right? Hit on her. You accidentally hit her. Yeah, you hit oh, her. Man, that would have been terrible. Yeah, dude, I told you. I'm because I'm, like, I'm picturing that scenario of like you, you approach those scenarios different. I would have yeah. been walking up to that, going like everybody's like, "Oh my god, you got to neutralize to punch him." I would be like, "Look at that back. Yeah, His back is just right there because he's doing this." And yep. You go, Whoop. Yep. It's all mine. And right. you just tie it up, put your hooks in, and and it's done. It's and he's easy. Done fun you kind of wish there was more of a struggle <laughs> but you're like okay i mean are you gonna fight yeah, yeah but you're right i i i it's about getting that position it is yeah. it is it's about and but the but the position like there's the there is a um there's the physical position right which is which is positional dominance so that we talk about we talk about passing the legs. We talk about securing the hips. We talk about securing the the head and arms and and or the shoulder and the arms and then the head. And all of this is a positional dominance. But there is a positional dominance that occurs in your mind as well. And that's and that is having that confidence and understanding and how this is going to operate and how this is going to function and what you're going to do without having to think step one, step two, step three. Right. You know, you're going to like the dominant side of things, guys, when you train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and you train on a regular basis is that you are, in fact, that guy that if something bad happens, you're the guy that's going to take care of it. Right. You're the gal that's going to step in and say, like, this is not okay, and I'll, I'll handle this yeah. to the best of my ability. Like the, when everybody knows it, and they're all sitting there, and you can see it on everyone's face, yeah. and they're all uncomfortable, and like, sure. they don't know what to do. I, I, I hate that feeling. Yeah. But yeah. when you don't, when you have the answer, yeah. and you can help, it's you, a, it's, it's, you don't eat, but like, again, you're not even thinking in the moment of like, oh, I can help. You're just like, huh. Yeah, it, right. Yeah. Right. And it it's like, clicks. yeah. And it just clicks. And, and sometimes, and I would, I would argue that like most of us as just like grown ups, as grown adults, we know the people just by looking at them, the way they walk, the way they carry themselves. Those are the people we don't want to mess with. Like yeah. there's something about them. And, and, and those are you guys. That's, <laughs> that's what you people are. Yeah. You're it's the people that I see like, walking into class. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, okay, this person, like they know, they, they understand this scenario. And so again, that my friends is positional dominance. Yeah. You are demonstrating yeah, yeah. that ability, that knowledge and that confidence in your abilities to be able to come in and take care of a scenario like that. And, and everybody's just going to get out of your way and let you handle it. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah, yeah. because, but because it's true that for those of you that don't train in any type of self-defense scenario, those that don't know how to fight when that stuff happens and violence happens, whether we like it or not, it just is a natural state of being a human being. These things occur. 
that's what happens. You freeze because you yeah. don't know what to do. Like, yeah. and that's that's legit. Like, that's not your fault. I'm not mad. I'm not no. upset with you. You you it's just surreal. don't. It's it a is weird surreal, thing where and you're you like, don't know what Whoa, to do. What the fuck? Right. Yeah. But do you know what to do, Pat? Yeah. You sure as fuck do. Yeah. You're like, oh, violence. I know that. I know that. Pardon me, darling. Could you hold my glass? <laughs> 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 just like going into a pit. Yeah. You know, it's like the same idea of like when a great song comes on at a show. Yeah. And you're just like, man, I just got to move. <laughs> so go, right. I just got to go. It's go time. Yeah. I feel like as instructors, we say it a lot, you know, position forward submission. And I just mm-hmm. wanted to like provide some, some clarity to our audience of like why we think that way. Like, and because it's part, it is like the, at its core, it is like the, the fundamental of like what we do as as jujitsu practitioners yeah we are we are it is the gentle art and that just means that it it is almost the gentle art translates into complete control yeah when we have new students i tell you guys this we have brand new students i say first i'm going to teach you how to control yourself and then i'm going to teach you how to control other people and that's very empowering. That's a, that's an incredibly empowering thing. When you know that you can control somebody else and stop them from moving, never mind stop them from hurting other people or you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is a that is a gift, guys. Yeah. That is a huge like and the submission end of things is the sexy part. Yeah, that's the that's the uh, that's the cherry on top. It'll just have to be a topic for another day. Yeah. yeah. So, sorry. Anyway, <laughs> what's in the world of jiu-jitsu today, my friend? We've talked about you being uh, a master of many things, <laughs> but speaking of positional dominance, is that I didn't know that you were a model now. Is this is this something? <laughs> is that what you call this pose? Did, did you get me on this one? <laughs> is this is this what you call positional dominance? Is okay. this your pose? I don't know if this is like showing up on on the screen, is, and yeah. I'm sure. And if it doesn't, if not, I will add. I'll it. make sure that there is some like yes. Yeah, so let's talk about this picture real quick. And I figured like in in the pursuit of providing you this this glimpse into my life, this uh-huh. gem as I call it, yeah. that it's you were going to torture with torture me with it at some point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. First of all, I have to explain it in context. Uh, I have to put context to this photograph. Okay. okay? Because the, <laughs> first of all, first of all, it is rare. It is rare that you will uh, see, see you me out of the gym. See me out of the gym, yeah, yeah. and 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 then if you did see me out of the gym, it is even more rare that you would see me without a shirt on. You know. Oh, okay. Really? And I, th- then it, I thought this would be like a. This is not a normal thing. It is a normal thing in my house. Oh. oh but oh. not a normal thing in public. Not, okay? You're not like posting thirst traps. Like. Okay, so all I'm going to encourage you guys to do is go ahead and hop on my Facebook page and see how many pictures of me there are. That's true. Yeah. There actually I tried to do that for <laughs> speaking of the intro. I tried to do I tried to like let me find some cool candid pictures of Jeff. None. None. <laughs> Not a Zero. fucking one. It's like you're like in the FBI or some shit. Exactly. This it just doesn't happen. So so, the, so this is a gem. This is a gem and the reason this is happening is because we were talking about Luke in the last episode. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, and so Luke and I share a lot of photographs about like what we're eating and like what we're preparing same, yeah, same, yeah and yeah. it's and it's fun and i enjoy it and i was just i was on a kick because i had uh we'd gone to costco and i'd purchased four new york strip steaks oh, they were like cut. oh i don't i'm oh. so good and they were two inches thick guys they were yeah, beautiful I love them. and uh and i was so excited i came home and i and i took a picture of it in the pan right before i was getting ready to grill them up and Luke sent me a photograph of him like flexing his gigantic arm because oh, I was like, because I, I was like protein, you yeah, know, yeah. and he's like raw protein, and I was like, holy shit, look at this, yeah. right? So I did this in jest <laughs> as I was carrying this meat out to the grill. Uh-huh. I, I actually made my wife take this photograph. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you take your shirt off? I did. I took my shirt off. Really? And, yeah, I did this all like on purpose. I thought like you were. I thought this was like Fourth of July. You're no, just hanging out. No, no, I'm not just hanging out. I totally did this on purpose to like fuck with Luke. <laughs> 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 and Luke was like, "Yo, dude, this photograph goes so hard." So originally, you called it meat sweats, but meat I sweats. feel like I feel like it could also the pose could be called positional dominance. Positional dominance. That's but, right. And uh, the steaks came out great, by the way. But it's weird. So, like, I obviously <laughs> it's weird. It is you, weird. If you Google, so like, you know, a lot of times you can actually Google search like a name. Yeah. Right. You can say Jeff Beck. A lot of times a guitar player goes up. Right. But I'm still alive, by yeah, the way. Yeah, he's still good. <laughs> alive. I mean, for the most part. But if uh, so, like. But sometimes you can kind of reverse search like an image. Okay. And then, like that's a way to kind of search. I don't know if you've ever yeah, done yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I'm like familiar a, with it's it. It's kind of yeah. like with the FBI kind of does it, facial recognition and stuff like that. But <laughs> I didn't realize. And Amazon. <laughs> not only is modeling one of your strengths, but you also were in the world of grappling. 
<laughs> in professional wrestling. <laughs> I can't believe you found that. Yeah, I, yeah. I honestly, I and I watched <laughs> during this era. I yeah. feel like I would have seen yeah. you yeah. at some point. I was there. And you don't look a day older whatsoever. Like, yeah. You still look exactly the same. They still look exactly the same, yeah. It's crazy to yeah. me. Yeah, both of those guys are old as fuck and look at me. Maybe, this is what I'm thinking, Yeah. are you possibly a time traveler? <laughs> Did you go back it's, 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 <laughs> and sabotage the sub? I did not. I tried to save them. I think everybody's trying to figure out what sunk the Titan submersible that was looking for the uh, the Titanic. Everybody knows that. That was yeah. a hot story. It was <laughs> the, t- t- the Titanic. It was Jeff. <laughs> it wasn't me. I, I look. This is a peace offering that I was making to that submersible, and oh, to it was Poseidon. <laughs> yeah, and it was like, and they were like, "No, thank you." And I was like, "Suit yourself." Okay, so maybe okay, maybe you're not a time traveler. Maybe you're not an assassin. But maybe you're a fan of both time traveling and assassins. <laughs> Jeff, I've seen this picture a million times, and I've never noticed you in the background. But I, if you just focus, if you enhance right here, Jeff was there when Jack Ruby shot Lee Harvey Oswald, right connected to this Texas sheriff who is very, very rarely faced. Yeah, I mean, he was like, whoa. <laughs> he basically, honestly, and, and I don't know where the steak is at this point. Well, I'll tell you what happened. And, <laughs> did and you have the steak with you? I did. I had the steak with me, and that bullet went right through Lee Harvey and into that steak. Oh. Saved my hand. Oh, wow. Look at yeah. that. So, And also, for a guy who says he never wears a shirt, yeah. or he, he very rarely is taking a picture without a shirt on, Yeah, I don't know about that. I feel- this one I found interesting. <laughs> You took your your. Why talents. am I so huge? <laughs> well, because you're a lot stronger than all these gentlemen. Oh, here. that's right. Yeah, yeah. you're here uh, helping to train with uh, George St. Pierre, John Danaher, and Elon Musk. Yeah, who's this gentleman as well? Well, that's Lex Freeman. Lex Freeman. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 This yeah. Uh, this group here. Yeah. Deadly group. But <laughs> any any smart grappler, you know, right? Right. You cover your bets. I was, yeah, right. Yeah, there's the Zuck. Yeah. So Jeff, uh, uh, in the world of jujitsu today, <laughs> I think this topic is covered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff is yeah. a world traveler. I've been around a, b- a bit. Yeah, he's been training with Zuck. He's been training yeah. with uh, uh, Elon Musk. Yeah, he's been everywhere, man. I've been, I've really been everywhere. I, um, I Johnny really, Cash wrote that song I, about him. I had no idea. Uh, the I, you, you've outdone yourself. I mean, you posed for a lot of these. I mean, so like, I, you can't say that you were surprised that no, these were going to come up. That's I'm a little. You knew bit you surprised. took these pictures. I. <laughs> And apparently he shops at Costco a lot because he's got a lot of stakes. That's a lot of stakes. Like, I think part of that is, yeah, yeah. You're not sharing with Volk. You're not sharing with Zuck. You're not, not sharing with Izzy. None no, of them. No, You just have one stake here, Jeff. I'm like, you have to you have to battle me for this stake. <laughs> and the winner gets this stake. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. This one's still my favorite, though. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Jack Ruby, what are you doing? <laughs> Where you going with that gun, Jack? Yeah, why you got a shirt off? He's shooting somebody. <laughs> Ask him. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, so that's the world of jiu-jitsu today. Uh. I actually don't want to add anything okay, else to it. Perfect. This was glorious. <laughs> Pat, thank you for embarrassing me and... Uh, <laughs> And letting the world know that, like, if you want to find pictures of me on the internet without a shirt on and holding a stake, yeah. it's now available. And now those pictures are available for you guys to Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> so where else is Jeff been? Dude, I, I really wanted to do a Where's Waldo. I, was just like, that, I don't know if that's going to pick up on camera. <laughs> right, it probably wouldn't. That would just be for yeah, me. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. I'm sure, that the, I'm sure that, the, uh, that the crew that we have will be relentless yeah. in their pursuit. I'll share it in, I'll share it in the uh, 6 a.m. group. It would be yeah. appreciated. If I mean, it brings up a lot of questions now, so yeah. you probably want to ask, ask a black, black belt. We got one that is... A very thoughtful and okay. very well put question that I'm going to try to read accurately. Okay. So here comes Pat reading again. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by the 6 a.m. podcast. And notably relatable now and on notab- audio only. On audio only. 
So, oh, wait, I just went to your fucking thing. All right. So, <laughs> this is from Josh. Okay, this is from Josh. Right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, love listener him. Listener Josh. <coughs> Mr. Kempner. Looking at a, a BJJ from a tactical perspective <laughs> concerning law enforcement, military, and general self-defense with a weapon. Okay. So, this is actually somewhat within the theme of the show. Right. Right? How does your decision tree differ from being able to utilize both your dominant and non-dominant side to being restricted to mostly non-dominant when carrying a pri- or, uh, yeah, primary carrying, weapons yeah, right. uh, platform pistol rifle. Right. Um, there's more. <laughs> what are the benefits of uh, to training this aspect? Uh, m- modality versus yeah. mentality. Right. Okay, so those are... Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm following you, sir. All right, good, good. All right. <laughs> is it hot in here or is it this when question? When I got to this point, I was just like, modality? And you're like, what the, what the fuck, fuck is modality? Uh, how can we add this to our daily training days, uh, live roles, etc.? Yeah. At what threshold of failure should we train technique to create an automatic response? Hmm. Right? Wow. Uh, zero expectation to having anything addressed today. Greatly appreciate you and Jeff. Much love and respect, Josh. Wow, I mean, holy shit, Josh! Also, great job, Pat. I fucking yeah, you you did a pretty good job. You got nervous in the middle. It's hard. You got, but What's you pushed through, and I'm, I'm I'm proud of you. Just listen, just bear with me for a second. I'm proud of you for pushing through on that one. And Josh, since you're listening to this, uh, I assume. Like what a, a very thoughtful and well articulated question, right? It was. I knew it was good, and I just didn't know. I don't completely understand. So he's talking about so, if you have a weapon, sidearm, like yeah, this is or, your dominant hand. So right, and it's going to be tied up, right? So because you're going to be reaching for your weapon. Well, right? what he's talking about, yeah. So he's, what he's talking about is if you're in a if you're in a hand to hand confrontation, right? So whether you're law enforcement now, he's military, mm-hmm. and so he's coming from that perspective. And the question becomes like you. From a from a tactical standpoint, when you're carrying a weapon, whether that's a, a pistol or a knife or a baton or something something that that could be introduced into the fight that you could lose, uh. and and then be used against you. Oh, okay. I don't even think of that. I have right. a knife on me usually for cutting practical like, things, not self defense. Pocket knife. But right. if I need it, I have it. Sure. And it's you know, but. But I never even think of that. So, I'm like, oops, what if they get it? Right. And now, let me, like, I will I will disclaimer this by saying that I, like, we have people that are in our gym that are far more qualified to speak uh, from a tactical perspective. Okay, yeah. um, not, not least of which because they are way better black belts than I am, but also work in law enforcement or are oh, for, yes. former or current military. Yeah, yeah. But but I do have an understanding just from, like, learning in a, in a from a self-defense perspective and having worked in those environments before and teaching classes and so forth, there are some very like pragmatic and simple ways that we can approach this problem from the very get-go. So so having a novice understanding of, of tactics when it comes to weapons, the first one is remembering that, and this is not for Josh because he's he's actually a professional soldier. So he, he understands like, he understands his weapon systems. He understands their, their weaknesses and their strengths. He understands, you know, range. He understands, like he understands a lot of other things that that maybe like a, a complete civilian would not understand okay. right but um but for those that are that are brand new to this understanding that like when you when you bring a weapon into a fight then you are also escalating that fight right. and so anybody and and there's we have lots of 6 a.m podcast listeners that are that are um that are concealed carry they they you know they are proficient with firearms and they shoot on a regular basis and carry firearms one of the things that they that is taught re- very early on, and by the way, I'm not I'm not anti gun. By the way, I, I love shooting guns, but I don't I don't have weapons in my household. I don't carry a weapon on me. The, just these guns <laughs> and the meat. Yeah, they're they're always loaded in this meat. <laughs> in this New York City, brother. <laughs> just ask the Hulkster. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> if there's one guy on this planet that's eating my meat, yeah. I'm going to tell you, brother. <laughs> Let me tell you something mean, team, dude. <laughs> um, they'll tell you that if you pull if you pull a weapon, you, you must be prepared to use it. Like, yeah. you're not pulling it just to threaten somebody. You're pulling it with the intent of using that, that firearm. And so, and you then have to appreciate that there are ramifications on how that, that, uh, that environment escalates, whether it's your decisions or their decisions. So, but but just to answer the question in the most practical and simple way for this podcast, because we can talk about this more in depth, and I have other thoughts on this. And again, not 
not necessarily the best guy to ask about this. Right, right. Again, I do from a self defense tactics uh, position do have do have experience in working with law enforcement and securing firearms, working with the weak side versus the strong side. One of the things that we can do, and we do this we do this a lot in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, is that we tend to focus on a dominant side. We pass to a certain side, we submit from a certain side, and but the opportunity for us to work on both sides of the body is there every time we train. Yeah. And and I know we make a joke about it and we're like, the ah, passing you, doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, to you're the left. Or to yeah, the right? yeah, yeah, to the right. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the good so the good side versus the dumb side, or I'm like, ah, oh, I see you're working on your dumb side. And and the thing though is is that the more we work on that dumb side, the more accurate and the and the better we become at it. It's important for us to be able to train on those sides, and we should be thinking about that. So like, if you've mastered a a, a pass, let's say, yeah, from your strong side. You should be taking that time now to work on the weak side, so that you don't have a weak side, because that way, that way, and it's the same. I, I don't want to like, I don't want to smash this into the ground, but like it is, it is very much like skating switch. Okay, when you learn skateboarding and you learn how to do tricks, uh, like cause I'm regular footed, so my left foot goes forward, but when I s- turn it around, it's like a completely different. I, I, I mean, I'm an idiot, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean, and I don't skate switch very well at all, but. But the more you practice it, the more you realize that, you know, you do have a preferable side. Yeah, you do yeah. have a dominant side. But you can train yourself to be strong on both sides. Yeah. And to have an answer for that. So you're right. You're, you're, if you're right-handed, your weapon is going to be on your right holster. Right. Uh, or on your right hip and your holster. And you need to make sure that that hip is turned away from uh, a threat. Yeah. Somebody that's going to take that weapon. And then for you to be able to close the distance and get that person to the ground and secure them in a, in a from a dominant positional, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> positional dominance. And then that way you're also securing them from being able to extract a weapon themselves or to extract your weapon and use it against you right. is, is imperative. So just in, just in very practical terms, and again, as a start to the answer to this question, and hopefully maybe we'll have other people that will like chime in and help uh, in this, in the, yeah, in pound the, off. yeah, pound off in this. From their perspective, especially if they carry a a uh, uh, a proficiency in this or a, a greater understanding, my recommendation for you just in the outset is that when you start practicing, and this is particularly true if you get brand new people that you're working with, is encourage them to work both sides. In and, and again, there are a lot of like positions in jujitsu at this point in my jujitsu career that I feel very comfortable on both sides. Like. It, they feel, and, and, and that's why I feel confident in telling you guys this, is because eventually you, you won't notice a difference, not a discernible difference in the in the action of doing said jujitsu. Right. So, for instance, like I can feel very confident that I can triangle choke from any position, whether it's my right side, left side, it doesn't matter. Like I, I could choke you from that position. Right. Um, the same thing with like arm drags and like there are a lot of different things. Now that doesn't include everything, but there are a lot of positions. And just like you'd mentioned earlier, I'm very comfortable passing to my right. Yeah. Your left. Yeah, yeah. And most people aren't. Yeah. And they're not, not only are they not comfortable passing from that position, but they're also not comfortable defending from that position. Yeah, that, it's right? almost, it's so crazy how you, you can kind of just walk that way. Right. Because somebody doesn't Sometimes. realize, whoop, whoop, whoop. Here's like, <laughs> like, I don't I, work from I, this I, side, right? Who goes that way? <laughs> right. Jeff. <laughs> Jeff goes that way. Mm-hmm. Well, that's. I think that was a very thoughtful and. It was. I'd and like to talk more about it with him, and then hopefully we can get some again get some other people to, to chime in here that have uh, an experience with that. All right. Well, then uh, we have one that's a little. Oh, we have another question. Yeah, a little less uh, thought. It's like this is not that it's not as insightful, but it's just not as, and I, for lack Look. of a better word, wordy. <laughs> uh, when is your favorite time to go to sleep? This is from Sarah. Oh. My favorite time to go to sleep is between nine and nine thirty. Nice. Yeah. Done. Yeah. It doesn't always. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> it does not always work the way that I wanted to. Um, you know, guys, I, I train, six yeah. days a week. Yeah, you need to go to sleep at night. Some days I train multiple classes a day. Some days I give privates and I train multiple times a day. 
and it's it can be rough like yeah. especially if like i get home and uh, i find that the evening classes that i teach those evenings are are much harder for me to like calm down and go to bed on time yeah. which makes the next morning that much more rugged <laughs> <laughs> i figured out the solution to this problem and that's just getting a l- extra large <laughs> sheets coffee in the morning and slamming that motherfucker before 6 a.m and just trying not to sheets yourself <laughs> yeah trying to sheets my pants <laughs> Sheep's running. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wear the white gi. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, this episode is sponsored by Sheets. It should be. Honestly, at this point. Don't sheets your pants. Yeah, don't sheets your pants. <laughs> Try the new corn dog or something. <laughs> the new corn dog. Um, that's, that was very insightful as well. But speaking of insightful art and yeah. also emotions, what's on your turntable? Pat, listen, I have had the extraordinary joy of redoing my office here recently. Ooh. Okay. And in that pursuit, um, which by the way, took place on July 4th because my plans got canceled. You guys remember this we, yeah. uh, from the previous podcast. So on that day, and because it fell in the middle of the week, it seemed odd that we would do anything that didn't involve work. So I, I redid my office, which has been a long time coming, guys. But in that pursuit, I... Resurrected my first adult purchase, which was a full blown like stereo system. Okay, oh, so yeah. Pioneer head the unit. The thing with the white and red, uh, the the speakers in the back that you have to like hook up. Oh yeah. Like oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I the whole those. shebang. It has a dual cassette player. It has a fifty disc CD changer. It's got a Pioneer head unit. I mean, and I've like whatever ten thousand watts. Totally worth yeah, it. Yeah. Tower speakers. And, of course, my turntable from back in the day. And I've had other turntables I listen. Because when we say what's on your turntable, I mean, we, we're generally talking about whatever music we're listening to. But I literally have a turntable and a record collection. And I listen to those records on a semi-regular basis. Nice. Yeah. Um, but now, like, I had, I had installed all this thing and, and resurrected it. And the only thing that I needed to do was change the timing belt on my turntable. And it was it was glorious. And you know so, how to do that? Like, that's, that's yeah, something that's, like... It's super easy. I don't know a lot about... I should probably know more about vinyl. Yeah, but I, really, I mean, it would seriously take me less than, like... It'd take me less than five minutes to teach everybody how to change oh. uh you know add it to the a list. timing belt on a turntable <laughs> add it to the list of things he's good at <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah not one i brag about so, yeah. but but um but at any rate what i have on my turntable right now is very very special and i'll send pat a picture so he can put it up on okay. the on the internet because you can't find this song anywhere oh. not on the internet you can't find it on youtube like really yeah it's it's the amazing royal crowns and it's a song called Amateur Night, and it came on a 7-inch, um, and I have it on blue vinyl. And I'm telling you guys, like, nothing sounds more amazing than the song Amateur Night from the Amazing Royal Crowns oh, on wow. those speakers. That thing thumps. That's okay? awesome. And it is it is a hard song, man. That is, like, it's wicked. So I'm assuming that you're inviting everyone over to your house to listen because you're <laughs> suggesting a song <laughs> <that we can laughs> <check out. laughs> I'm like, I was thinking about like, is there a way I can record it so that everybody can hear it? Because everybody, copyright every, it, uh, it right? is. It's, it, it, well, no, but but he, but here's the funny thing is that of those guys, like I could reach out to Jason Kendall. Yeah. Center. he we were very we were very like in terms of like peripherally, but we were good friends. Like in terms of like he recognized us, knew me, like we okay, talked so, all yeah. the time. So it wouldn't be a thing. Like yeah. yeah. It, but also, it's also one of those things that I'm sure they can purchase it, right? They can't just no. they just can't listen to it. No, you really? can't. Good luck fucking finding it. Wow. Good luck fucking finding it. But that's what's on my turntable. But I want to share it with everybody, so I'm going to figure out how to make this happen. Yeah. Because... Just, if, you, if you're listening to this episode and you see Jeff, just ask him and he'll sing it for you. I will... <laughs> <laughs> with my shirt off and Cannon, you're next and you're next everybody gets one <clears throat> <laughs> holding a steak you're right <laughs> coffee <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how you'll get one each one done really quick you like it it's good next it's good, right? <laughs> just imagine rich sound through speakers <laughs> real through great speakers, speakers. Like, yeah, really great speakers Jeff's gonna start selling his speakers on the road just to get more coffee <laughs> hey man you wanna buy stereo <laughs> I need some more sheets, dude. <laughs> Hogan, you remember me, dude? You remember me, Hogan? No, brother. No, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's on your tear table? Well, Jeff, uh, I... <laughs> I, I don't have a, I don't have the fancy setup that you do, necessarily, as far as the stereo, but one of my favorite... Um, I, I, this sounds weird to say and it's not like a plug because i can't even remember what the the company is okay but i got really great earbuds like bluetooth earbuds or whatever yeah and and they're 
it sounds strange, but I, I always I like having I am very much audio. I don't like watching a lot of stuff when I'm doing like having stuff on the TV. Sure, or, yeah, like sitting in front of the TV a lot. But like unless it's fights, pretty much that's well, about right, it. yeah, yeah. But um, I like listening to either podcasts or music. And one thing that I've been listening to a lot of music on lately on these earbuds is I've really enjoyed going for, like, walks and listening to them at work and all this other shit. Okay. And I have really... I It's very rarely do I I suggest a band, much like you, <laughs> where there's limited <laughs> <laughs> content out there, but a band known as Tsunami yeah. is, is, a, is, like, a, a hardcore band that I, like, have, like, fallen in love with. Okay. I don't know. It's there's something about the production is definitely is it helps. I love the production of their okay. releases. Yeah, but it's a lot of singles that they've kind of had a really slow burn lately. Of their, um, <laughs> are we getting infiltrated? Uh oh, going on here? Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> the fuck's that about? Um, but uh, they're they're basically uh, just straightforward hardcore that is like refreshing. I don't know. It it doesn't sound like Agnostic Front, but it reminds me of Agnostic okay. Front. You know that fucking just crazy yeah. raw energy. Oh yeah. And and it's kind of gotten me to the point where like it's it's made me want to do more things like go on walks and <laughs> <laughs> and explore nature. <laughs> explore nature. <laughs> I told you, dude. I'm a I am an enigma. You really are. <laughs> I love listening to super crazy, violent, uh, hard music, but while doing nice, peaceful things in nature. Yeah. Going for a hike and listening to hardcore music is one of my favorite things. And Tsunami, particularly the song Gate Crasher, which has a lot of vulgar language as well. <laughs> oh, it's got bad words too? <laughs> tsunami here, <sir>, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> tsunami style and stuff like that. They're just, it's, it's, it's weird, um, chaotic energy that I, I've really been able to like awesome. feed off of. And it's actually motivated me to do healthier things okay in yeah. pursuit of just giving my time to that so like i feel like tsunami once they put out a full-length album i'd be happy to talk about that as well yeah but yeah. they've just kind of been putting out these like little two songs seven it's like songs, singles like little itty or bitty, eps yeah, yeah eps you know yeah and and i really would i would suggest everybody check them out that's awesome you that's can awesome. find them pretty much anywhere well you can find yeah. the, you can find the amazing crowns you can look them up on apple Podcasts, and and they have like yeah they have they had two releases yeah two full lengths but this is an ep there this is a single actually no it's an ep there's three songs on it but so there's it is an ep but good luck fucking finding it yeah i'm i i i know i won't but it's one of those things i found all those pictures of you so true so, you could do a reverse search on this and see if what you come up with. You can run, but you can't hide <laughs> royal crowns. <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'm coming for you, brother. Oh man. Well, I guess this will wrap this up. Yeah, I think that's. Uh, I think we've said everything that needs to be said. Yeah. But now there's time to say the things I want to say, Jeff. <sighs> what is it? <laughs> Comb your hair at home, please. Comb your hair at home. <laughs>